So we just got back from Cancun and wanted to do an updated video about what to expect at the Cancun airport since some things have definitely changed since my other Cancun travel tips video. And if you're new to our channel, Three Days and Trace Noches is not a travel vlog or a travel agency. We just bring you real honest, to the point, information, tips, and resort reviews about the destinations that we go to. So definitely please like and subscribe and keep following us. We arrived in Cancun on a Sunday around noon, which is the day we always travel to Cancun because it is one of the best days where there are less lines at the airport and also much less traffic on the street. So you do get to your resort a lot quicker. Once you get off the plane, you walk down this hallway towards immigration. And in the past, you had to fill out these paper forms, but now everything is done electronically and they even have new e-gates in the Cancun airport. So things are going much faster, which is great because I know that's been a big complaint. So when you do go down the elevator and they do not let us record this, so I'm just going to show you some of the stock footage. To the left are the e-gates, which are reserved for adults only, Americans, Canadians, Mexicans with a passport six months or above. And then to the right, they still have the staffed stations. And in fact, they were um, a little bit less crowded than the e-gates were and seemed to be going just as quick. So when you get down to the bottom of the stairs, you can kind of decide which way you want to go based on your situation. They also have restrooms off to the right, which I always tell parents, go to the bathroom with your kids before getting in line. I know you're anxious. You want to get in that line and get through. But in case you get stuck, you never know what can happen. Use the bathrooms ahead of time, which are off to the right. Now, once you go through immigrations, you're going to go towards customs. Again, we could not record any of this. Um, you'll be walking past the duty free. So there's an area if you needed to pick up anything there. And then the area where you pick up your luggage if you've checked it in. Now, if you follow our channel, hopefully you've learned not to check a bag in, even if you're going for six or seven nights, because you really can do it just by a carry on. So, watch some of my other videos that show you how to do that. Then you're gonna go through customs, and usually they don't search our bags this time, they did, but it literally only took five or 10 minutes. And then you get through to this area. So, this area of the Cancun airport is commonly referred to as the shark tank because you are bombarded by people approaching you to purchase timeshares and car rentals and taxis and excursions, dinners, anything that you can think of. So be prepared. Do not um, talk to anyone. It's not rude. They're used to it. Just keep looking forward. Just say no gracias and make your way outside. Now, a lot of people do ask us about renting a car at the airport, and we do not recommend it at all. However, we did stop to talk to the guys um, just to get some more information. It's very affordable. I would say $40, $50 a day. Um, now, some of the things that I've heard, I've, I've heard that they target, um, the police in Mexico target rental cars. They see them. They stop them for different reasons. Of course, the car rental guy said that that's not true. However, when we spoke with our source, who is our driver for many years, Nacho, he said um, it is not recommended and really not safe to rent a car in Cancun. So you're better off, you know, finding reliable transportation like Nacho Tours, which I'm going to talk about in a second if you already don't know about them, instead of renting a car. And yes, you may think that renting a car is the more affordable option, especially if you plan on exploring the city a little bit more, going off of the resort or where you're staying. However, if you get pulled over and get a really expensive ticket, then it won't be. And also, you know, driving the streets in Cancun is not an easy thing to do. So I prefer to be with an experienced driver who's been doing that for a while and pay a little bit more because remember, you should never save money over your safety. And I tell our followers a lot. So whenever you're planning your travels, just keep that in mind. Now, another new thing we did at the airport, actually for the viewers, was exchange um, dollars for pesos. So they have right there, they have a bank where you can do that. Now, really, you do not need to do this. The US dollar is accepted everywhere. However, there were some comments that say, no, you get a better deal if you pay in pesos. You know, it's safer if you pay in pesos. So we knew we were going to go to a dinner off the resort one night. And so we wanted to pay in pesos. And honestly, it really didn't make a difference. And I know there's some also comments about using your credit cards. Sometimes you get scammed doing that. But just never bring your debit card. Always bring your credit card. And, and know the exchange rate. And 
we had no problems during, during our entire trip there. So you really don't need to do this. But if you are going to do it, the airport's a great place to do it because the exchange rate was lower than some of the places that we saw off the resort. Now, we're gonna go through and find Nacho and gonna show you how to do that. I think the number one tip that I can give anybody when they're coming to the Cancun airport is to arrange that transportation ahead of time because a lot of the scams happen with the taxis. So you want to make sure that you have safe and reliable transportation set up. And we've been using Nacho for over five years. He's like family to us. We've used a lot of other companies and taxis, and his is definitely the safest and most reliable transportation we've ever had while in Cancun. Now they do all of their communication via WhatsApp, so I will definitely drop that number in the description below. And he confirms everything with you and will tell you where to meet him. And it's usually right here outside the doors. He's going to have a sign waiting. Um, he has our sign here. You're going to see three days, tres noches. There um, is Nacho and Carlos. They're very easy to find, usually in the blue shirts. And they will safely take you to the resort. Now, another thing that can happen, even to people who have set up transportation ahead of time, is once you make it to this area, other transportation companies will approach you and try to convince you that the other ride has been canceled. So if you are kind of wandering around and it looks like you can't find your company, they will approach you and say, oh, that has been canceled. We are your new ride. So you just want to be careful of this as well, because that is never the case. So you just want to then contact your transportation company. You would just WhatsApp um, Nacho and just confirm his location. I also wanted to warn you about the free transportation that the resort offers. So the first issue is when you arrive to the airport, you have to wait for others to arrive because they are taking multiple guests. Sometimes it's 30 minutes, sometimes an hour, sometimes more. Then when you do finally leave, they might be making multiple stops. So for instance, the Palace Resorts, they have multiple resorts and they use the same shared transportation for all of them. So we just met a couple who was going to LeBlanc and they had to wait an hour, actually more to get to the resort when the resort is only 15, 20 minutes away. So we always just think it makes more sense for us to pay for the private transfer because we get to the resort quicker, we have more time um, for our vacation and for us, time is money. And a quick tip about Margaritaville, because when you arrive to Mexico, what do you want? A margarita. Just be prepared. They do charge airport prices. So I'm talking like $22, $25 per margarita. So just know that ahead of time. I also wanted to comment on the Uber and taxi strike, which I've been seeing in the media. So Nacho filled us in on that. Basically what's happening is that you know the Uber is illegal in Mexico because they are not licensed, they're not paying the taxes that the taxi drivers have. And so that's why I guess some of the fighting had started, but the government now has taken over and made sure that it is safe for tourists, um, that there are no Uber drivers, and there's none of that fighting going on, which you may have seen a little bit in the media. In fact, they closed off the hotel zone one day, um, but he assured me that is all taken care of and that should now, another tip I want to give you is regarding the construction going on in the main roads in Cancun. So you want to allow extra time to go from the airport to the resort and then also from the resort back to the airport. And maybe even one step further, a tip would be if you haven't booked your resort yet to book a resort that's closer to the airport. So the hotel zone is where we stayed during this trip and it was much closer, did not take us long at all because who wants to spend hours in a car trying to get to the resort? Now, going to the airport, you do need to allow extra time because, you know, sometimes you can get stuck in one to two hour extra traffic. So that's something that's a little bit more of a headache as well. So again, if you stay a little bit closer to the airport, it's not going to be that much of a factor. So now let's talk departing from the Cancun airport. And we almost always depart on Wednesday afternoon, and it seems that there are a lot less lines there. We never really have an issue. Again, my first recommendation is not to have to check in a bag because then if you can do an online check-in, all you have to do is when you get to the airport is head straight for the security lines. And again, we had no issue with lines or anything like that. 
And, you know, Cancun really is trying to make it as easy for tourists to get in and out of Cancun as possible. So you don't even take off shoes, belts, or jackets or anything like that. One thing they are particular about, though, is um, the liquids. So I usually pack all of my liquids in one clear big bag, and then I can just take them out and put them in one of the baskets to go through security. Now, once you get through security, then you can go find your gate. Now, one thing at the Cancun airport is that they do make late gate assignments because um, it's a small airport. And I did see that they are expanding. They're adding some gates. I saw some new kiosks and some new restaurants popping up. With that being said, a lot of the restaurants can get really crowded. So one thing we've started doing is before we leave the resort, and we always stay at an all-inclusive resort, is we have a really big lunch so that we don't have to sit down and have a meal at the Cancun airport and wait for a long time and also spend a lot more money. They also have places to get snacks and drinks and then obviously souvenirs. So if you were not able to get the souvenirs at the resort and you want to get some, they have two very large places where you can get souvenirs. I think my final tip for the Cancun airport is just to reiterate what I already mentioned about planning your arrival and departure days and times because it really does make a difference. I mean, obviously holidays are going to be busier. Weekends are going to be busier. The summer months are very busy um, almost every day just because there's the, um, the constant you know, tourism of families vacationing. But we always travel on a Sunday morning and try to get there before noon and never have an issue. And then we always depart on Wednesdays if we can. Like Wednesdays around one or two o'clock is when we arrive and our flight is usually a couple hours later. So just keep that in mind if you do have flexibility. I know sometimes people don't, but it's something to consider when you are planning your trip to Cancun. I hope you found this quick video update of the Cancun airport helpful. And I do answer all comments and questions. So if you have anything to add or if you have any questions, just drop them in the comment section below. And please like and subscribe and keep following us at Three Days and Trace Noches. Well, we keep bringing you honest, to-the-point information about the travel destinations that we go to and show you you don't need a whole week to have an amazing vacation.